Hi, my name is Richard and I thought it'd be a really good idea to try and explain a little bit about the videos that you're about to see. I'm doing these together with my good friends Simon and Susan Vaness in Orlando, Florida. Like many of you, we're locked down with very little chance to go outside or do anything particularly interesting at the moment. But we can also all dream about getting back to our favourite place in Orlando. We put our heads together the other day and thought, who can we contact that might have some really good stories, either about the history or the future? Well, Jean Columbus is one of the first people that came to mind. We asked Jean to do some stories and I linked up with him across the pond and recorded these little snippets the other day. I hope you enjoy them. Jean worked for 38 years with the Walt Disney World Corporation and the three videos that we have look back at his early entry into the company, they look back at Walt Disney World and how it actually developed into the opening of Epcot and the third video goes even further back in time when Jean as a very young man and entertainer met Walt Disney World in a coffee queue. Yep, in a coffee queue. I do hope you enjoy the videos that are coming up. The first one goes back to Jean's original uh, working for the Walt Disney World Corporation or in fact Disney on Parade at the time I think it was called. I hope you do enjoy it and we'll give you a little bit more about Jean when I introduce one of the other segments later on. from Orlando, Florida. I'm Gene Columbus, and uh, uh, this is home for me, home of Walt Disney World and many other great things. And I I'm reaching out to everyone today and uh, wanting to uh, uh, offer uh, fun in this time of uh, craziness. Uh, but but that, that will pass. And to help past the time, uh, it was suggested that I share some stories with you. Now, first of all, quick background. I had a 10-year performing career. I had an opportunity to work in, in motion pictures, television, ah, but my favorite thing was being on stage live in musical theater. Oh, it was glorious. I was so fortunate about halfway through my career to get injured. It was good fortune because I couldn't work, I got bored, and I went back to school, which is ultimately what prepared me for all the wonderful adventures and opportunities that I would have available to me beyond that. Well, as I worked my way back into the uh, world of, of performing. Uh, there is a uh, actor's equity. That's the union for uh, performers in musical theater. So I always seem to get elected the equity deputy uh, in the American Guild of, of uh, Musical Artists. I was on their executive board. So I kind of was always interested in, in the, uh, the bigger picture and how things came together. Well, I'm doing performances at this wonderful theater, uh, the Dorothy, Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in Los Angeles. That's where they used to do the Academy Awards. I remember sitting watching the Academy Awards with my sons. We'd be watching it and I could say, I've performed on that stage many times. Well, uh, I was doing a show and the, and the uh, production manager, uh, his name was Bill Holland, came to me and asked me if I'd be willing to be a performing assistant stage manager. What do I got to do? You're going to keep actors and singers from walking into moving scenery. So I thought I could do that. So I said, sure, why not? So they gave me a few extra dollars in my paycheck and a flashlight. So I must have been really good with the flashlight because for the next show, they didn't cast me as a performer. They asked me to be an assistant stage manager. Well, that just started me down this new journey. I can remember uh, back then when uh, people would uh, talk about what, what they do. Well, what do you do? And I started saying, well, I'm a professional. I'm a stage manager. And then I got a call, a call from the Walt Disney Company. Back then it was called Walt Disney Productions. 
and they asked me to join the national and international tour of Disney on Parade. This was this huge, huge arena show. Today, we, we have a show uh, that is similar. It's called Disney on Ice. Well, if you look back in, in, the, uh, in, in, in the 1970s, this was Disney on wood. And so uh, on Valentine's Day, 1970, 50 years ago, I joined the Disney company. And when I joined, they, they hired me initially as the ballet master an assistant stage manager, because that was my, my new skill set, and Cinderella's Prince. Those are the pictures that continuously come up to haunt me. No, it was quite wonderful uh, uh, as I look back on it, having the chance to uh, be that, uh, that special guy for a Cinderella. Well, uh, as, as we're taking on and expanding, and they were, they, were, they were going to do new versions of Disney on Parade, they decided uh, to move some of their, their more experienced people into the new production. And so I worked my way through the stage management ranks rather quickly. In fact, uh, it was uh, two years after I had been there, they asked me to be the production stage manager. That's sort of the the, the guy that is responsible for uh, many, many things in, in, in the production. And, and yes, I had assistants, uh, but I, I can remember saying to them, uh, is that I don't know if I'm ready for this. And, and they said, well, Gene, you have the largest show in the country to learn on. And so there I was. So I spent a number of years, about seven, with four of the different versions. And that took me some incredible places, certainly all over the United States, into Canada and Mexico. Uh, Mexico was, uh, became a somewhat favored place and annually, we would go there. Well, uh, the the uh, situation in Mexico was such that uh, they never had a, a formal agreement, the contract, and and uh, Disney uh, kept saying they needed a contract. And I I talked to the promoter down there, and, and because the the company manager that was down there to handle that got very ill and he had to be sent back to the United States. So I was down in Mexico City and they're sending me information. Not only do I have all this new responsibility, I'm production stage manager and dealing with all the issues in a foreign country. They said, did you need to also get them to sign the contract? And the impresario in Mexico uh, said, well, this, this, this has many favorable things for Disney, but very unfavorable things for me. And uh, when I asked them to change it, they wouldn't change it. So I can't sign it. And I, I said, well, we're running our show and, and we're already dealing with millions of dollars. And he asked me if I was an honest man. And I said, yes. And he said, do you believe me to be an honest man? And I, I said, of course I do. I mean, you've been very upfront with everything. So he shook hands with me and he said, this is our contract. And then from that day on, he would never sign a contract because he said he had a contract with Gene Columbus. <laughs> so no matter where I was in the world, if a production of Disney on Parade was going into Mexico, I had to go with it. Well, fortunately for me, uh, I had the opportunity to stay with the show until the very final performance. Uh, we did that in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I'm proud about the fact that in South Africa, uh, Disney was able to get uh, a, a multi uh, 
a multiracial contract. We would not go there and 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 have it uh, a strictly uh, uh, white audience. Uh, we said that 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 that, it, that is so against our brand, and uh, and it was really it was really kind of special to uh, to be that, and that was. Uh, that was in the, the 1970s where the apartheid was, was, was uh, but the South Africans really loved Disney and really wanted the show. And they were willing also uh, to, to open up their, their minds and heart. But I'm going to tell you, the, the crew down there was probably one of the best I ever had. And it was a, it was a great experience. Well, we closed the show, and then I came uh, to uh, back to the states, and I started to work at Disneyland doing projects for them. Then it was uh, it was one of those days where Bob Yanni, the vice president of entertainment at Disneyland, uh, asked to speak to me, and he said, uh, "Would you be willing to go to this place in Orlando, Florida?" Only until we can find someone that'll go there permanently. But we need somebody to go to Florida right away. So Bob had hired me originally for Disney on Parade, and I trusted him, and I said yes. So uh, that was uh, uh, that was the beginning, and, and so I found myself in Florida. And I got to tell you. I, I think they must still be looking for that per person that will go there permanently because <laughs> I ended up staying in Florida and retiring from Walt Disney World. So over 38 years with the Disney company. So as you're sitting there and you look at your career, where you are from that vantage point. We never know for sure where we're going or what may be available to us. One piece of advice, never say no. Never say no to any opportunity. Take advantage and like me, when you get to the other side, when you get to the end of your career, you can look back and say, I had a great 